You want me to? Sure. Violin used to be in a video, but I think it got deleted. I want a video too. Can you can you shred it? Please? Also, I saw you um did. Yeah, sure. You start a video. Wait, the video? Oh, it's um yellow person. Oh, just so you guys know, it is recording. But it is recording. Game mode? Wait, what? Looks like you guys are both gonna have to get on the scooter and race each other, huh? Um, I tell you what, the blue one's faster. Blue so whoever gets the blue one's probably gonna win. I'm just saying. Maybe later. Maybe when it's a little bit colder. Uh, right now we're not able to. Okay, that's fine. In a little bit. Just the fun part: waffle cones filled with dark chocolate. I'm not really much of a chocolate guy, but there's one more in there. What? A little little drumstick? <laughs> That's funny. You know, mamas always get down out here. <laughs> I'm depressed, but uh, right there. Just uh, that's Dylan's first s'more right there. <laughs> no, it's actually my third. Your third s'more? Actually, maybe my fourth. Your fourth? Well, tell me how it tastes. Uh, Try it. Oh, that's not hot for you. Use a salve. Pretty good. Good, right? Pretty good. What is going on you guys welcome back to the channel today today i want to partially button up the turbo element build now that we finished all of the hot parts and the cold parts to the turbo kit build i want to get to the injectors which are these gram 1150s i want to also install the afr y band this is brand new it is an x series 30300 the last thing that I want to do is pull out the stock ECU and install this one, which has K-Tuner installed by your boy, Nomis Industries. So if you guys are looking for K-Tuner or any Cop Mini or even Hondata products, be sure to hit up Nomis Industry. link in the description below. Got a lot of noise going on in the background, guys, so we're just going to get right to it. Let's start with the injectors. I'm hoping I can just take off the fuel rail without taking off everything else and just sliding the injectors on but we're going to find out. Probably going to lose a little bit of fuel here. So these are grams 1150 cc's it looks like this injector is taller than the k series and it has b series top hats on it so simple enough we're just gonna pop off the top hat right here and that should give us the correct length for um install this into a k series engine 
so this is a little tricky because I'm pretty sure these hats has been on here for a cool minute I really hope these injectors were cleaned before they were brought to me because uh, I don't want any like misfire or stuck injector situations I believe he said he got these from his neighbor which had a turbo integra the o-ring looks pretty decent on here it doesn't have any like deterioration or cracks or anything like that so I think we're ready to just install these like they are and you can see now that they are just about the k-series height and I also did now just notice that the injector plugs are different I believe these are EV ones which is like OBD one Honda plugs and we need a conversion or we need to solder in the correct plug for this these injectors are a little bit shorter and I might need to shave down about a millimeter or so from the spacer this here you don't want the fuel rail to fully tighten down the injector to the manifold you want to make sure you have a little bit of play um, I forgot what guy explained to me about um, it having some play you could potentially break the injector if it's way down too tight seems like we have play with all the injectors and now we got to figure out our connector situation you can go to Hunter Tunes website he sells the adapters for the um, K to B series style injectors I have them on the Hunter Tune injectors in the blueberry but in this case because we don't have it I'm gonna have to solder in some connectors from uh, my bin Very practical to have these quick disconnect OBD1 plugs instead of your typical Honda where you got to use a pick to pick out the pins to remove the clip. So this right here is all said and done. And now I think we're going to move into, where is it at? Somewhere down here. Uh, we're going to move into the AFR wideband and I got to figure out where on the firewall or underneath the car I can run the harness through. Probably the engine harness hole we'll see okay so I'm trying to figure out how to take out the ECU and I think I got it so this little plastic piece right here this is underneath the glove box it goes literally right here but you don't actually need to take it out because the ECU is behind the glove box so the glove box itself has two little Phillips or eight mil screws right here and you remove them right right here in the back side and then you just take off the glove box. We have the ECU chilling in the back over here. And there's two 10 mils as far as I can see. I already took off the one right here where my finger's at. And then there's one deeper in the back. So I have this extension here. Hopefully it'll reach. And I can pull out the uh, ECU. This might be a little tricky to even put back on, but... I took off the plugs from the harness because I wanted to see what else was holding the ECU in place, but okay, that is not coming out. Okay, now I gotta figure out where the other one's at because I can't see it. Okay, so I got the ECU pulled out and there was a, another 10 mil right here at the back. So I took off this one, the one in the back over here, and then this one was kind of hidden. So once I took off these two, I can pry the ECU to the side and have access to this one. Now, before I can even pull the ECU out, I had to literally disconnect these relay from the mounting points, which is right here in the back. So we can free up more space to pull the ECU out. ECU sits right here in this bracket tree and now we can install the other ECU. K-Tuner has its cable on the board itself and it has to stay with the ECU at all times. 
unlike K-Pro where you can just, you know, plug it in and out right here off the side of the ECU. So this one right here, you can see it is, um, you know what, I actually want to just glue it so we're not tugging on the cable, pulling it from the board. But I'm sure Nomis has zip tied it somewhere inside there, but I just want to be extra cautious about it. So I have some glue right here. Let's burn. Before I put it in there and hook it up, uh, I'm just gonna leave this open because I'm really trying to follow the engine harness that goes into the engine bay for routing the AFR harness through. So um, now let's go ahead and get into the AMX series and figure out how we're gonna snake the harness through the firewall. This right here is an AFR Y-band, which is very practical for um, boosted cars, supercharged cars, or even all motor cars. But uh, most of the time people will tell you if your tuner did a great job, you don't really need to worry about it. If you're a daily driver or you drive far, AFR wide band helps a lot. It will tell you something is wrong when the AFR starts changing where it's supposed to be targeted at. Now we had a homie that just pulled up uh, a couple of nights ago where his AFR was like whacked out and uh, we were trying to figure out what was going on. And we found out that the car was running lesser on fuel pressure and that somewhere along the fuel line it is clogged which caused the AFR to super lean out and we kind of sorted the situation but not entirely because we need to still drop the fuel tank to make sure that the pump and the filter is still good and not clogged so AFR wideband can help you in the long run and I do most definitely recommend it if you're force inductive for the most part so am x series y band uh this is kind of like the newer model there are many uh different other ones out there in the market but i've always had great results with the x series and the wiring harness on this is really not too complicated there's only five wires we have power we have ground and the X series model has a brown and white white data logs to the ECU. So you got to tie that in wherever it is specified to. And then the brown wire also gets ground for that. So we're not going to run the blue or these two twisted together right here, the white and green. So simple enough, we're going to need a route. Um, I want to say it's this one that goes to the firewall because this is for the O2 sensor, which is provided with the kit. So let's go ahead and figure this out first before we bolt this up. This right here is the engine harness that goes through the firewall and this is the grommet that holds it in place. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna slice an X into the grommet just so we can fit the uh, plug for the AFR harness, which is this little white plug right here. So we don't need to put a big hole on it. Take you guys inside real quick with my L flashlight. Uh, you can see the harness hole is right there at the bottom and the AFR plug is gonna come right through that. And there you have it. So I didn't show you guys how I wired the wideband power ground source and the data logging wire because obviously this is a really tight knit area. I had to throw the ECU back in to test the ECU plugs for power and ground because this is one of those where the, the power won't come through unless the key is on and the ECU plugs are plugged in. So I plugged it in and according to the Honda Base app that you can download for your phone, on the A plug, pin A2 and A3 is ignition on power, and then A3 and A4 is ground. Now we had ground with the key off, but we didn't get any power until we plugged up the ECU and threw the key on, and then we had a 12 volt uh, source coming out of this wire. So for the wide band, I had to throw the ECU in and tie the wide band data logging wire beforehand because obviously it'd be super hard to reach it back there from the uh, analog wire to the ECU. So we wired it in and then we bolted the ECU down. We checked to make sure we have power and ground and then I tied in the X-Series 
black and brown wire, which are both ground together to the A4 wire, black wire for um, power ground source. And then the red wire, we tied it into the A3 for the ignition um, source on. So right here, we have it all um, soldered together. And before I loom it up, I just wanna make sure that the um, Y band itself is actually turning on and working. So you have to plug in all three plugs in order for the ECU to function properly. And there we have all three plugs. Make sure my ground and power aren't touching each other. Separate it. And then key on. Y band's working. So I'm gonna go ahead and just route everything into place, throw all this stuff back together, and uh, we'll find a place where we could mount this. All right, looks like the next thing here is a laptop and a base map. <laughs> Ooh. Okay, we're doing the input for the wideband into the analog. I've never seen guava before, bro. Is it good? Yeah, hella good. Hella good? Yeah. Not just good, hella good. Hella good. Hella good. Guava. I love guava if you guys didn't know. Just saying. P.O. box right. open if you guys want to send me a case. <laughs> <laughs> now what you got this time? Not no queso pizza, right? Burritos. Burritos. Or chorizos. Just burrito? Yeah. I'm cool with that, bro. Alright, well, I got the map all set up here. Hey. Here. Just record it from the front. Make sure there's no fuel leaks. Give me the thumbs up and we're gonna try to fire it. Nope. No leaks. Go. Right now we're gonna eat real quick and then we'll get right back to this. This guy always coming through with the food. We got the asada burrito and pastor. Pastor, pastor okay, I'm gonna try that because every time I go to any burrito joint, it's always asada, 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 asada. Um, but yeah, anyways, uh, this, this looks like my booty hole might hurt. So that's all you, bud. I might try this. It already hurts my nose, but I also have Levix sauce, so we'll see. We'll find out. is in session <laughs> every time like so 15 degrees this is literally what you mean degrees. by tuning vtc yeah so every, every single time you change vtc it will have its own fuel fuel map and its own uh ignition map and uh since this is uh 30 degrees um factory yeah factory so we 
are 40 degrees and 50 degrees is the exact same map as the 30 degrees because it doesn't go beyond that. All right, guys, so we are gonna wrap it up for today's video. We wanted to install the injectors, which we did, Gram 1150 cc's. We wanted to install the AFR Y-band, which is down low and inside the car on the left side of the bezel. And we wanted to install the K-Tuner ECU, run it with the base map and get it all working tip top, target the AFR and have this thing drivable on that tunable ECU. The homie inside stopped by, owner of this vehicle. He's taking off right now because he needs to go buy some things, but he'll probably be back tomorrow as well too because this thing is almost ready to go home want to give a big big shout out to the homie nomis industries because we literally sat inside the car for a couple of hours literally clashed in session learning k tuner all together and we were able to figure out some of the bugs that we've been having after checking out the k tuner help section and getting this car to finally go past 2000 rpm and target all the afrs that we wanted the car you guys saw we drove it around the block and it sounds freaking awesome it feels freaking awesome the afr is looking freaking awesome and uh, this thing should be ready to schedule for a dyno session soon the turbo kit for the turbo element build is almost nearing here the only thing we need to do left to this before it goes home is the catch can setup which we have a vented oil cap and the bull boost catch can which we're going to mount somewhere here we don't know where yet and then another thing we need to do is the water lines for the turbo which shout out to being our fittings we got all of that on the way today tomorrow and it should be here within two days so we can plumb the turbo for longevity i think those two are going to be in its own video and then once the car leaves the driveway si yes, can go to the muffler shop and get the full exhaust system done i was going to do it but I mentioned before that we only have a two and a half exhaust system and I want him to go three to ensure that we aren't congested when this car goes on the dyno so he's gonna take care of that on his own time but yeah this thing is almost ready to rock and roll and I hope you guys have been enjoying the build series of this one I'm really ready to work on the next vehicle coming in but I'm most definitely still gonna take my time until this thing is you know perfect and ready to go home so we're going to wrap up the video right here. I hope you guys enjoyed the progress update of the Turbo Element build. And if you guys did, man, be sure to leave a thumbs up. And if you guys want to stick around for the finalization of this vehicle and maybe stick around for the new build because it's been sitting around for a little while, be sure to hit the subscribe button. But with that being said, thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.